Hello, thank you for watching. This is Game Audio Toolkit, where we look at approaches, ideas and implementations specific to game audio. And this time, we're going to look at WISE and how to set up a side chaining. Chain. Side chaining. Have a look. So, in WISE we're going to set up a multi-layer ambience where one layer can influence the volume of another layer. For this we're going to use meter plugins that measure the volume of a layer of this ambience and then apply this volume to an RTPC which can then be used throughout the project. I generally start any new project by creating a new work unit and that keeps the default work unit clear for experiments or work files or just general backups. Underneath the work unit, I will generally always place an actor mixer. In this case, it's going to be our main game mixer. And I can put any default values that apply to the rest of the project in here. And underneath, we create another work unit. Now, the reason to have so many different work units is that everybody can be working in their own one, which makes it much easier to avoid any merge conflicts. There's also an actor mixer following that because you might want to have some default values that apply to these children. Let's add some sound effects. I'll start with the thunder sounds themselves, add them all to the projects, and create a nice little random container for them. Which we'll call SFX Thunder. We now have a thunder sound that we can start, and we'll put this on a loop and we'll have a trigger rate transition and we'll get a thunder about every 20 seconds. Quickly create an event for this play event. Actually, you see how it adds play here. I generally like to turn that off. It's a new project. I've forgotten to do that. So you can do that here. You can turn off that. It puts it as a prefix. So any new event we create will not have that play in front of it. So here's an event. It plays the thunder. That's great. Now, because I'm going to create a few more of these sounds, I'm going to create a master event. That is a play all, and I'm just going to drag all the events we create in here, and then I'm selecting play all, and I'm pressing this little pin button over here. That means that whenever we switch anywhere in a project, it stays on that play all event, so we can just play everything we've created with this play button, as you can see. Now, in order uh, to do what we want to do, let's add another piece of audio and this time we're going to add a nice ambience of crickets okay that can be a bit louder right so in our play all we're gonna have the crickets let's create a new event for that and then in the play all we're adding these crickets as well so both of them will start at the same time now what we want is whenever it thunders the crickets are going to respond to that they're going to disappear for a little while crickets uh, do not usually listen to thunder like that but for a soundscape that's just a nice kind of interplay between the two now to do that we're going to set up a bus structure we keep the game wide mixing and the object specific mixing in two different places and it has a very big advantage if later on in your project you have to add additional features or have to do maintenance so under sfx ambient bus we create an additional sub bus which we call sfx thunder and we create a bus which we call sfx crickets now that's very granular and in a project that has a lot of sound files you probably wouldn't want to make a bus or a sub bus for every object for this demonstration that just keeps things simple we want the thunder to go into this new bus we just created which is the thunder bus and the crickets to go into the cricket bus we want it to be that when it thunders the crickets get a little bit quiet and for that i create a metering bus Again, you could do this on a bus or object itself, and that's a perfectly valid way to go about things. However, I like a structured approach. It makes your project maintainable, and that's something you really want towards the end of a large project, when you're inevitably going to have to add extra things you didn't account for. Anyways, this isn't about project structure, so let's get on. We add an aux bus under our metering bus. And this will measure the incoming volume of the thunder. So this is a thunder meter, but let's call it meter thunder. As of WISE 2017, you can uh, have sense to auxiliary buses. So in this case, we want to send the sound that comes in from SFX thunder here into the bus SFX thunder to go into the meter bus for thunder. So 
we set this up, we add the meter bus here, and that's added. Of course, now it means we have the sound twice. We have the sound once in SFX ambient, and if we measure that, we can see that it will do it there. And we'll also have it one on the metering bus. So, and that's something we do not want because it doubles up the sounds and it could also create some phasing issues. The easiest way to deal with this, and this is a trick from Joe Hogan, who is the uh, lead sound designer on Elite, is to kind of add an effect on the on the top level of this bus. Again, will work. Okay, mute bus. And uh, basically make sure that the signal can't escape from that bus. So the bus itself is still mixing. That means that any plugins we do on a lower level still work, but the sound itself just cannot escape. Now that we have a metering aux bus, we add a metering plugin to meter the amount of sound that's coming into this bus. And we call this meter thunder because it meters the thunder. When we play the thunder, it will come into this. And all we need to do is add an RTPC because the meter will be written into an RTPC. So RTPC thunder volume. And we quickly have to go into that RTPC and duplicate the values that we have here with the ones we have here. That's just to make it more readable. Right, so we're metering the incoming signal, we're writing it to an RTPC, and I think you can guess where this is going from now. On the Cricket bus, we can now add this RTPC, we can add some volume, we can take that newly created thunder volume, and because this goes from zero to, uh, from minus 48 to zero, we start with no muting or lowering of the volume, and then as the thunder comes in, we say, okay, crickets, be gone. And um, let's add these crickets to our watch list so we can see what's going on if we play it. And let's see if that works. So that worked, and, and you could hear this uh, bird that got a little bit excited. Let's see if we can't actually make that something that just happens when it thunders. Obviously I've prepared this, because I heard it when I was making those grains. Let's add that alarmed bird. We need to add an event, another play event. There we have our alarmed bird. Let's add that as well to our list. The bird will behave differently from both the cricket and the thunder, so we'll make a new bus. SFX, alarmed bird, and we take that alarmed bird, we send that to our special alarmed bird bus, and we want to have it behave exactly the opposite from our cricket. We want the bird to be quiet unless there is thunder. And let's check if that works. Excellent. It's a bit loud. So I'm going to add a, a field ambience. Makes it a bit warmer as well, so it's kind of night timey now. Let's see. It's nice, a bit loud. That's cool. Okay, let's add another event for that. And Add it to our play all list. Pin that one back again. Now, let's see. What I also want is there to be a bit of rain after a, a while. So let's add a bit of rain to the mix. Import that. There, we've got some rain. Let's make another event for that, play event. Let's make sure that's added to our overall play event. So now we should get everything together in a bit of a cacophony. What I think would be good is that if it started raining, we'd lose a bit of that field ambience because it's quite lively and it sounds like it wouldn't be that lively when there is as rain and thunder. So we'll add another bus called SFX Rain. We'll do the same thing we did before. We override the master, 
send it into the correct bus then create another metering sub bus auxiliary bus called meter rain you can speed this whole process up here's one i made earlier there's one big downside working this way and as if you change your game mix you've set everything to work on thresholds that change it would be nice if there was a way of um of normalizing that but there isn't so you just have to go through your project but hey it's great we put everything in one place right you know exactly where to look and where to fix everything right so we've got a rain meter here it's creating an rtpc and on the um the bus i haven't made yet sfx field we will also add an rtpc to slowly fade out those sounds when it starts raining we can copy no we create a new one we're not going to be lazy no copying here with this we have the rain volume we set this to zero. Oh, i didn't change i didn't do my normal change minus 48 zero and minus 48 of course you can go lower if you want to and you can also uh, use the slew rate there, but I generally do it on the meters if I can, because the slew rate doesn't have a hold on it. Either way is fine though, but it's again, it's generally a good idea to do things structurally the same, so you know where to look for when you have to add extra things. Um, so with the field ambience, I'm thinking as soon as it starts raining, we probably want to start getting rid of the entire field ambience. That just makes a lot of sense. Let's have a listen. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them, and I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching. Until next time.